joining us for another edition of our video series. This week's topic is focused around keeping employees engaged during summer youth programs. And although we're going to be talking about leadership from local Boys and Girls Club, the messages can be universal for any youth program, summer camps, et cetera. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask each of our guest panel members, just uh, whoever wants to go first can go uh, first, but introduce who you are, where you're from, and why you love working with kids. All right, I, I'll go first. I guess my name is Ashley Chavadia. Um, I'm the CEO with the Boys and Girls Club of Las Cruces. Um, been here for, it'll be eight years in August. Um, but why I love doing what I do is because I'm a club kid myself. Um, grew up going to the Boys and Girls Club of Carlsbad, New Mexico, and knew kind of at a young age that this is what I wanted to do for a career. And, um, you know, I just feel like if I can have the impact, the same impact that the club had on me, then, then I'll be fulfilling, uh, you know, what I wanted to do in life. I'll go ahead next. Um, hi, my name is Catherine Plymel. Um, I'm the COO at the Boys and Girls uh, Club of Newark. I have my uh, undergrad in public administration and nonprofit and also my master. So um, I've always been passionate about working in a nonprofit field. Um, and I started as an intern at the Boys and Girls Club um, over six or seven years ago. And um, I just fell in love with the movement and never left since. And so I've just kind of, you know, worked my way through. Um, we've been doing a lot of great things with the kids and that's, you know, what the work is really about. And I love it each and every day. Um, and we are currently in summer camp mode, which is awesome. Um, it's one of the best programs um, that we have and one of my favorite times of the year. So yeah, that's who I am. Hi, I'm uh, Danielle Belsky, Director of Operations for the Boys and Girls Club of Portage County, right smack dab in the middle of Wisconsin. Um, been part of the organization since 2009. I started right after, uh, finished my last year of college and then started. Didn't really know this was the direction I wanted to head into until probably a two or three years later, still trying to find my career path and realize hey, I think Boys and Girls Club is the career I wanted to head into. Um, so it kind of was, uh, you know, blessing in disguise and been with the organization ever since then. Well, it's great having all of you part of this. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time for it. Um, you know, let me start out with some of the fun stuff first. And that is, you know, what are some of the fun programs that you do during the summer that the kids and staff enjoy that you usually don't get to do during the rest of the year, but you could do during the summer? For us, um, I love summer because we have so much more time with the kids, right? You know, we have 10 hours a day as opposed to four um, after school. And so um, it's really a time that we're able to run a lot of different programs. Um, but I think if we're talking about fun for us, it, it's jam packed with field trips over here um, because um, our facility is small. And so we have to kind of keep our kids cycled in and out, but it gives the kids the opportunity to go all over the place. Um, you know, fortunately things have started to open back up a little more um, since the pandemic. So they've been able to go to water parks and swimming and, um, you know, national monuments and um, hiking and all sorts of places. And I think that's probably the, the funnest thing for the kids, you know, museums and, you know, you always got to throw in the educational component. Um, but um, it's just an opportunity for them to get out and about to um, places that maybe their parents wouldn't have time to take them to um, or be able to afford to take them to during the summer. I was going to say um, field trips. I would definitely echo that um, when our capacity has allowed us to do that. We've been doing a lot of walking field trips to anything near, um, near and close to us. Uh, the biggest thing I would say is we always implement Wacky Wednesdays which is really fun. So for instance, we've done tie-dyed Wednesdays. We've done like 4th of July, Christmas in July, um, a variety of water game Wednesdays. But the fun thing that we do with the staff is at one of our club sites, because we have 10 across Portage County, we actually do incentives for our staff. So whenever they dress up with the theme and whoever goes above and beyond gets to win like a gift card to a local Dunkin' Donuts or a local coffee shop. So that's always fun for them to do. So along with those long 10 hour days, it's that wacky Wednesday they get to look forward to. Um, we also implement for this week, they are doing the Olympics. 
So each club, um, each homeroom has the grapes or watermelons. So they have different fun names. Then they're all going to go compete in their own BGC Olympics. So it allows us to do a lot more team building with our club sites and our club kids, which is a lot of fun. That's great. That's great. So I love the team names, fruit names, huh? So I know I was trying to convince my other senator director from the other side to do vegetable names. So we got fruits and veggies, but um, we didn't get there yet. Yeah. And I would say for us, um, it's that long period of time that we get to be with the kids. Um, swimming is very popular. We're very fortunate to have our own um, Olympic size swimming pool. And each of our um, kids every single day get an opportunity uh, to swim and it's just been great. And we've also been able to squeeze in some um, swimming lessons. So the kids are just learning how to swim in the deep end and you can see like how their faces light up. They, they're finally been able to, you know, get to that end and their confidence is being built. Um, another thing is field trips for us too. Um, things have slightly opened back up for us and our teens are engaging in a lot of fun educational field trips. Um, and the staff are just like very engaged because part of what we try to do for our summer camp and it actually it allows us to plan with the staff into summer. And so they get a lot of opportunities to choose, you know, a lot of fun projects that they would like to do with the kids. Um, and so it's part of like empowering them to um, just uh, work with the kids and what the kids really like. And so um, part of that whole planning process um, really helps the staff to stay engaged. And um, they're getting all of that information from the kids. And so the kids are more engaged as well. So we have just a variety of like fun stuff like wacky wednesday we do fun fridays and it kind of just all builds up to fun friday where the kids are showcasing what they're doing throughout the week um so really getting the staff involved in that whole planning process um is really makes a big difference for us well gosh if i was a kid i gotta tell you i would want to go to all of your clubs um you know and and just as, as a little short note um catherine i gotta tell you um, so I grew up in Jersey and um, every time I would pass, um, you know, so on the way to New York City, when I was a kid, I would go to work with my dad once in a while or something. Um, we would always pass uh, um, the Boys and Girls Club in Newark. And so when I was a little kid, I always wanted to work for the Boys and Girls Club and I always wanted to work with kids. And it was because I would always pass your building all the time. So I just thought I would mention that to you. Um, Thank you. It's still there. Um, and we've renovated. So it's even more beautiful now. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. You're welcome at any time to visit. <laughs> um, well, let me throw this question to you guys. This is a little bit out of nowhere, but I am curious. When you were planning for summer this year, um, it had to be a little bit different compared to past years because of COVID. Um, I am curious, did you instill any sort of new um, the way you did a program or the logistics of a program or how you ran the club that you actually ended up saying, you know what? this isn't too bad. I might do this again in the future that like maybe I'm not saying the entire program, but maybe like something small that you tried doing because of COVID, but now you might stick with it. Yeah. So I know for us, we've, um, since I've been running the club, you know, I'm, it's funny because I'm not that old, but I still say that I run my club like the old school way where, you know, kids have freedom of choice. There's, you know, planned activities going on in every room and they get to choose where they want to be. There's no age groups. There's no rotations. Um, of course, with COVID, we weren't able to do that, right? They had to be potted in their individual pods, um, stuck with the same group, the same staff person. And so it was really funny to see how we were kind of scared to go back to the old way um, and once things started opening up. So um, we, instead of being, we kind of chose a middle ground. So instead of um, us being completely in pods or completely freedom of choice, we chose a middle ground to where there are certain hours where the same group of kids are with the same group of kids and the same staff every single day. And those are more, um, you know, programmatic hours where we're doing, you know, a, a planned program um, as opposed to just an activity. And then there are dispersed in between times where they do get the freedom of choice to, to go to other areas and choose. So um, it was it was funny how our staff, you know, they got used to working with really small groups. And so I was a little nervous for them this summer. This is the first time that we've had this many kids in the building with, with this group of staff um, to see how they adapted, but they've done well. And, and what I've seen is that um, 
because they were in such a school kind of world, you know, helping with virtual learning for so long, it seems like they have, um, they're doing better with their planning. The kids seem a lot more engaged and, you know, it's, it's been really, it's been really cool to watch. Yeah, I would say for us, um, one thing that we experimented with this year is actually offering um, full day hours um, instead of partial hours. So as like many camps, it runs for like 10 hours. And so we offered our staff the opportunity uh, with a break to work that full day. Um, and it and we never did it previously because we thought there would be an issue of burnout um because staff are working these long days but they're more energetic and they're more engaged um they get their hour break and they're back up and running um and that's been working really well and you know we're seeing we started to experiment with this at the end of the school year when we were doing the full day services and um i think it's going to help a little bit with retention just offering those full long days um, and staff get an opportunity to be there longer. Um, and I think it just helps with like behavioral management and just everything in general. Um, we just did like a, a safety walkthrough of the club um, and everything just looked phenomenal. And um, it was great to see. And so we are thinking about, you know, moving to this model eventually, um, offering staff full um, hours to an extent um, where we can. I was going to say, uh, we've recently entered into discussions like, what did we learn? What did we have? I would say, um, compared to Ashley's club site, we were very much on a pro program schedule where hour, hour by hour, we did the choice-based programming, didn't have the complete open club. Um, the nice thing is, because of COVID, we had to transform from computer lab. We, are, we had desktops, and now we have movable iPad carts. Um, so that's been like a positive insight for us where we are able to just implement things a little bit more on the go doing this classroom style. But I think what we've come across is how much more needs the kids need after COVID. Their social emotional needs are just so much greater that we're trying these smaller ratios. We're really evaluating, well, how high can we traditionally go? Do we need to reevaluate? What is our operational capacity where it was 250 or 300 in the summer? Is that really, can the kids handle it? And can the staff then handle the needs of the kids because they're greater? So we're really trying to take that into account when getting back to reopening back to normal. So, and you know that's a great point that you bring up because I know someone like myself, and I would think that you would be the same, all of you, is that I hate turning kids away. Um, I, I just hate it. And when you think of capacity and we think of like staff to kid ratio. Um, sometimes you have to think of that stuff. You have to remember that sometimes when staff have too many kids, that could be tough on them. Um, so very good point that you bring up. Um, well, for those of uh, those people watching that may not have been as tenured as the three of you may have been, um, what are some of the warning signs that maybe you've seen in the past um, when you notice staff starting to burn out? I think... Um... For me, well, it's funny because, you know, I always tell staff whenever we hire for summer, I'm always like, if you can survive a boys and girls club summer, you can survive anything, right? And I mean, sadly, I remember my first couple summers as CEO, it would be a miracle if we made it through the entire summer without at least one or two or three people quitting along the way. You know, um, now saying we've made it a few summers now where we haven't had anybody quit. But what, you know, I think an obvious sign for me is, I can just tell like tone with the kids and, you know, approaches with the kids. And, and it's, it's very obvious. Um, unfortunately, the one room, our learning center sits right outside of my office. So unfortunately the staff members who run the learning center are the ones that always get picked on the most because I'm the one sitting up here listening to them, but I can hear, I can hear a difference in the change of tone and it's just like a frustration type of deal. And, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, speaking to the full day um, schedules that Catherine was talking about, when we design our summer structure, we always design it, we double our staff so that we have a morning crew and an afternoon crew. And we do that intentionally because we know people are going to need vacations and days off and whatnot. So this allows um, shifts to be covered. The, the other day, you know, our teens have a separate building out in the front. And the other day, the teens were doing a lot of wandering. And I told my director of operations, I said, well, 
you know why they're wandering right I'm like you know where that starts right I'm like try I'm like it's the staff member in there is not keeping them engaged there's not planned activities if if they if the activities are planned and well thought out and especially with the teens if there's a uh, teen input and teen voice then of course um they're going to stay engaged so it's just keeping an eye on on those sorts of things that also being flexible a lot of our employees are college students some of them this is their first job so um, being flexible, I, I like to say I set high expectations, but not unrealistic expectations. I would probably echo everything Ashley said. It's the tone. It's when you walk in. There's been a couple of club sites where um, we opened up, opened them up, and I walked in and uh, you know said hi to the staff. And it's the first thing. It's you can just tell, and you're like, okay, hold on, let's reevaluate the situation. Where I sit down with my site coordinator what's going on, how do we get back on it and kind of develop a game plan with them. But it's very much verbal body language. I think the kids, the kids is excellent, but uh, the staff just can show when the burnout is coming. And um, I have a hard time uh, asking for days off because we're hurting for staff so much. So when asking them to require it, and then I think it's a domino effect where it goes into our center directors where you can tell they just need a day off. And I'm telling them like, go take a day off. And there's, it's such a, I forget the term, uh, self-serving group where they, uh, they, they're like, but I need to be here for my staff, where it's starting to help, trying to help them recognize you need to focus on yourself. Cause once you're, you know, happy and you're taking care of yourself, that cascades down to your staff as well. And, uh, you know, Catherine, before you go, Danielle, I was just kind of curious, are you originally from Wisconsin then? Yep. Okay, because yep. because every time I hear you say the word okay. Um, oh, man. It, I, I'm going to be listening for that the rest of this time. So uh, go ahead, Catherine. Yeah, I, I would echo every single thing um, that Danielle and Ashley said. Um, you notice it immediately in, in staff engagement um, if there is burnout and the quality of programming. So if the kids are bored um, and it's just like stairs in the sky, I always say eyes in the sky, um, you definitely can notice that there is a level of uh, quality that's sinking. Um, and some things we've tried to do, um, I think, you know, it's very hard when you are, at, you go from after school or full day services straight into summer. So we start to intentionally try our best to like take breaks between those um, four programs. So our core team would have like a week yeah. off, the staff that work directly. Um, sorry, my baby's here. I'm working from home today and he's very boisterous. He's nine months old. You could take this out of the video. <laughs> no, we love it. Love it. Keep it on. Yeah, he's yeah. just like very, he's like trying to get my attention right there. <laughs> <laughs> hey. He's like, come get me. Um, I'm a new mom. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, I would say, um, so we've tried our best to, um, with those weeks off, we've designated mental health days. Um, and this is very new for us. And we've noticed, you know, just like the clubs um, that need because of COVID, um, there was just like no breaks. You're on Zoom meetings or Zoom trainings, and then there's just no end to the day. And mental health days, we've start to just like mandate them and give them to our staff. Um, and it's been working, you know, fairly well. I mean, I have to say we just, uh, did a leadership round and we were talking about this summer and you know we're the fourth week into summer we have two more weeks to go and um, the staff are still engaged and this is the first year we can say that you know this is happening where we're fourth week and there's no like noticeable signs of burnout or quality of programming dropping um, and yeah that's what we've, we've we're trying new things that's great it sounds like a like all of you do a great job in making sure in, in one way or another, just scheduling things. So that way uh, staff feel like they're always refreshed and that, and that's a really important thing. So that's awesome. Um, you know, uh, one thing that I used to do is I'm a real benchmarking guy and I would go out and visit clubs all the time to kind of compare things and, and steal ideas. I love stealing ideas, which is why we're doing this panel discussion. But um, one thing our organization stole from another, um, another club was that they, this, this one club had these small forms they would fill out. And, and on this form, you would write something another staff member did um, that you thought was really encouraging for the day. 
And then you would tape it up on the wall. And now this wall was filled with all this encouragement that staff were saying about each other. And that's something we stole that our staff enjoyed um, during the summer, especially during those long days when they felt like they had to see something worthwhile that they did and how it made a difference. Um, so my question for you is this, besides scheduling something uh, for the day, um, as far as when people work, what are some other innovative things you've done at your, um, at your club to, to just keep people excited and encouraged um, throughout the summer? So our summer, um, we always start, when school ends, we close the club for a week. Um, and during that week, that's normally the one week out of the year that I really step out of my office for the week and dedicate myself to staff. And it's, it's you know, it's a lot of staff training, but a lot of it is, is team building too. So just fun, playing games, you know, and at the end of the week, we always end it. I take them all out to a restaurant, buy dinner. Um, and you know, it's just about the team building. You gotta, you gotta start out strong. Normally during the summer, <clears throat> we have a lot of new staff coming in. So it's, it's that bonding experience. And then, like I mentioned throughout the summer, it's, it is a lot more because it is so just jam packed 10 hours a day. It's a lot of, you know, we'll I'll buy lunch here and there. I'll buy breakfast here and there for staff. Um, and then at the end of the summer, we'll have a big kind of celebration just with staff as well. Um, that kind of, I think, keeps them going, gives them something to look forward to. Um, and um, the other part is, of course, just being open to, um, I know we talked about scheduling, but, you know, understanding that it is summer. So I always start the summer by saying, like, look, guys, it's only a nine-week program. I need you here all nine weeks. However, it is summer, right? And we are dealing with a lot of college students. So being flexible and, and giving them time off when they need it and recognizing burnout, giving them an opportunity to have a day where it's like, I need to catch a, breathe, a breath today. Like I, I just, because at the end of the day, if they're not their best selves when they're here with the kids, do we even really want them here? I know I don't. So, you know, just being flexible, but I think just little rewards. I, I think it's funny. I think my staff are very motivated by food. They are college students. So <laughs> food, food, food is like the easiest thing, you know, and, and it's simple things. Like we had a board meeting last week and there was a ton of leftover food. So I just brought the food over here for the staff. I know they'll eat it, you know? And so it's, it's a little things like that, you know, in the morning, go if I'm going on a Starbucks run thinking, you know what, I'll just pick up everybody's Starbucks instead of walking in with just my Starbucks. But, you know, it's little things like that that I think go a long way. I can go ahead. So we do a, a variety. My biggest thing that I love doing in the summertime is we do a halfway through summer party, like cued on the Bon Jovi song. Like I sing it a little bit during the, this party. But what we do is oh, we, can we hear it. Go ahead. No, no, that's a different <laughs> recording. Um, bring me back another time. Um, but uh, what's fun with that one is we have a board member uh, who is a big philanthropist in our community, and we get to have it at, traditionally at their house. Um, due to COVID this year, we did it at a picnic. But every summer, right around in the middle of July, is we do a halfway through summer party. Um, we bring them all there. We feed them. We All of our pro staff actually give a fun award out. Um, so for instance, mine was the secret singer award to one of our staff that I always catch them like singing to the kids, you know, something fun like that. Um, we'll do maybe a little bit of a slideshow, uh, but this past year we did like a big kickball tournament at the end of the halfway party, but it was just a big team teamwork. Um, and it was really fun because you could see different staff, all of our part-time staff coming together um, for that. So that's always our big hit for the summer. We also do, um, we do staff training three times a year, and then we've been trying to do it throughout, but we always do a graduation ceremony at the end of every staff training. So our staff have their lanyards and name tags, but we do a pinning ceremony um, at the end of it. So then you can see how many staff, how long staff have been there by the amount of pins. So we had, and we always do a pin reflected upon like what the summer is going to be. So like last summer, we had a little COVID pin. We did a little Apple um, this past school year because they were all teachers and we were open for e-learning. So different encompassing different things like that. Um, always that consistent supply of coffee. We do the same thing as, you know, bringing Starbucks or leftover food, um, always bringing that to the staff. Um, I was trying to think, we do little treat bags. Uh, we have a lot of a large college population. So whenever it's finals week or um, 
during various holidays or just because we can recognize they need a little pick me up, we do something fun with that. So a lot of food, a lot of incentives, and we do a staff of the month where staff can uh, nominate and vote and then they get a $20 gift card and a nice plaque. So, but a lot of encouragement and recognition. Everything we do with our kids, we do it on the staff level. Yeah, I think we do very similar things. Um, training, that's all the stuff that's scheduled. We've ramped up training tremendously. Um, there's uh, staff celebrations at the end of summer, we do one at the end of the school year. Um, something we do the staff of the month um, for summer we're doing staff of the week because we only run a six weeks program um, for the we used to do eight weeks but um, it's just it, it's hard when we are ramping up for the school year and um, something that we do also um, I actually stole this from my other job um, it's something called brilliant basic magic touches so um, magic brilliant basics you know everyone's doing supervision well they're engaging with the kids um, acknowledging them but you know if you notice someone's going like above and beyond the extra mile um, that's the magic touches part um, if someone you know there was a child and they were having a really difficult time and this staff you know was really able to help them or anything you know someone is like cleaning and they're you know they're helping to clean another classroom whatever the case may be you know on the spot we'll give like a little gift card to that person just to kind of, um, it could be Dunkin' Donuts is really big here. So there's always Dunkin' Donuts runs, but those gift cards are really popular and um, we'll give it to a staff like on the spot, you know, just um, acknowledging them in that specific moment, sort of like encouraging and reinforcing the good behavior um, that, you know, that they're expressing and going ab above and beyond. So that's something we've done. Um, we do the awards, um, lots of staff encouragement and recognition. Um, but that little, like having the gift card on the spot, um, really like lightens up someone's day and you know makes a big difference. Well, I love how all three of you take the time to encourage your staff members, give them a little uh, little gifts here and there to kind of keep them motivated. Um, you know, again, you guys have been around for a little a little bit here now, whereas some people. Um, there could be some CEOs out there or some COOs or some even some site directors where like this could be their first summer ever, the first time they ever even worked at a club. Um, what would be some some last advice you would give? Um, and then maybe keep it down to maybe, I don't know, four or five sentences, but what would be a last piece of advice you would give the leaders who are really stressed right now because their staff are stressed? Um, for me, I would just say don't lose sight of the mission. I think we're we're all in this field for a reason. and um, is you know that if that's your why, if the mission is your why, then you're you're gonna do your best. And of course, have fun. Summer should be fun for everybody, not stressful. I'm I'm there's so much. So four or five sentences is very hard. Um, take care of yourself. I think that's something that self care is just huge with burnout, with fatigue. Is if you're not happy, your emotions are gonna be wearing on your sleeve. But um, I love how you said it, Ashley, is have fun. Don't forget to lose sight of having fun and then um, there for the mission. Just echo everything. Yeah, fun's really important for summer. Um, go in with, uh, through those lens. And one thing I will say is that uh, reflect and learn. Even if for us, if it's four weeks into camp and something's not working for you, don't be afraid to reevaluate and even just stop doing it. Um, and kind of reevaluate and choose a different direction. Um, it's okay to just sometimes let go of stuff, even though you've put so much into it already. Um, and that's hard for folks to do, um, but I d highly recommend it. Um, be gentle with yourself and um, just do it through the lens of fun when it comes to summer. Well, when it comes to all of your advice, um, it seems like, and something that you know, I think maybe uh, Danielle brought up earlier is that um, the importance is just taking care of yourself. And, and sometimes when it comes to people that care about kids, um, you're, you're almost like self-inflicting wounds by, uh, um, by making yourself work um, hard and hard and hard and forgetting to take time for yourself. So I love that all three of you had kind of similar advice, have fun, and then also um, make sure that you're taking time for yourself. So I think everyone watching this video will agree that we have some awesome folks that were part of this panel. I uh, really appreciate you being part of this. Thank you so much for taking the time. And for everyone else, thanks for watching. Again, Chuck Rowe, Midwest Studies Group. Catch you next time.